Hey, have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Well, Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. I love it for the simple fact that it brings the sponsors to you. You don't have to search for them, and they distribute it to all the major platforms for you. So if you want to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start. Again, anchor.fm slash S-T-A-R-T to join me and diverse community of podcasters already use the Anchor. And that's it. Let's go. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Now tuned into the greatest. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. And today, I'm going to go back to a podcast I did probably about a month, month and a half ago, where I spoke about the superintendent of Chicago Police Department, Eddie Johnson, and now ex-mayor of Chicago, Raheem Emanuel. And the reason I did this podcast um, at that time was because Raheem Emanuel, along with his running mate, Eddie Johnson, they wanted an apology from Jesse Smollett and they also wanted him to pay back $130,000 to the city for the investigation that they conducted and the price that it cost the city. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up today is because I was watching a news cast and they were speaking about the multiple and I do mean multiple wrongful raids that are done on innocent people and the wrong warrants that Chicago police have been executing and the reason why they were doing the story was because They were having so many people come forward to tell them about, and I'm speaking about the news people, and I believe it was Fox 54 or something like that, that's in Chicago. So Fox started doing an independent investigation to which they have been stonewalled. They've actually gone to the point to where they're filing a federal lawsuit to get documents from the Chicago Police Department. Now, just like last week, I spoke about the podcast being for the police apologists because we had a young man that went out and literally murdered a woman after saying, okay, I not I didn't do anything as far as department policies, purpose for a welfare check by going down the street, parking my car, not putting on my sirens. Then when I see a door open, I'm not going to announce that I'm there. I'm going to go around to the back door. I'm going to pull my gun out. And then when I see somebody, I'm going to give them three-tenths of a second to respond to anything that I say to them or give them or anything like that. And in this case... It's funny to me because they are supposed to be the good guys. At least that's what everybody wants us to believe. But just like last week, if something keeps happening and I keep showing you something, at what point is it my fault for not doing something about it? Because if you fool me once, shame on me. But if you or if if you fool me once, shame on you. If you fool me twice, shame on me. If you're fooling me nine and ten times, it's all me because I'm allowing it to happen. Well, even in these horrible raids, <laughs> for the most part, I actually actually sat down and today I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about what 
you have the opportunity to do or the right to do due to their negligence and violations. Because one thing you have the right to be is secure in your own home, which it does not seem to be that case in Texas or in Chicago, apparently. Because just like I said, Fox was doing an independent investigation and Chief Communication Officer Anthony Guya stated that Superintendent Eddie Johnson doesn't have time to turn over the numbers of the wrongful raids and wrongfully executed warrants or information about the officers that were involved in these wrongful raids or the wrongful execution of these warrants. And in fact, CBS didn't have high enough rates for him to do an interview with them. But I want you to keep this in mind. Because CBS was exactly who he called when it was time for him to do the press conference for asking for Jesse Smollett to apologize. Asking for Jesse Smollett to pay $130,000 to the city for his quote-unquote wrongful actions. So, when we're talking about poorly executed raids, I'm going to get into that because I think that needs an explanation. Because when you're talking about this, it's, it's kind of vague. Because most of us have not heard of raids and things of that nature. And... It's also similar to what these young people are doing. It's called swatting, where they'll call in an emergency for the SWAT team to show up at somebody's house while they're playing a video game. Now, we know these police officers are trigger happy. Um, uh, yeah, I think fool me once. No, there's no, no chance of it now. You have Chicago, who was at the top, that has now been taken over by Arizona, three places there. And number four is now Fort Worth. And then Chicago follows in a close fifth. As far as officer-involved shootings, where they are shooting the citizens that are either unarmed or not involved in the actual crime that they're investigating. But when we're talking about a poorly executed raid, we're talking about raids that are on innocent families. And the price that these innocent families have to pay because of these people not doing things that they're supposed to do. That's what I mean by when we're talking about poorly executed raids. And when we're talking about incorrect arrest warrants. Now, you hear me often talking about how they don't care about the law. They are doing things that generate revenue, and that's it. So when you're executing an uh, incorrect arrest warrant, it's generally they're arresting the wrong person. And even though that person is proving they're not the person on the warrant, the police are still finding things to charge them with. Even though they had nothing to do with the crime, have not committed a crime, but they're doing stuff to create revenue or make an excuse for their um, mistakes. And then we go back... Because even Eddie Johnson, Superintendent Eddie Johnson, made reference to this. The poorly trained officers excusing, executing these wrong warrants, these officers have been cursing at and pointing guns in the direction of small children because the officers failed to verify they had the correct address. Now, here's the thing. It is literally their job to verify the information that they're giving others before they execute a warrant. Why is Chicago not doing that? They're the good guys. They do the right thing. Right? That's, that's what they want us to believe, that they're doing the right thing. And what they're doing is above board. But they're not doing something as simple as verifying the address. Now, I'm going to get into that because it's not happening once. It's not happening twice. But 
the thing that I want you to catch is that is they are cursing at children. They're pointing guns at children. I'm even going to give you one example where they zip tied a five-year-old and put a gun to his head. A five-year-old. Now, when we're talking about this, I want you to make no mistake. Chicago police officers are the good guys. They are the ones that are protecting and defending us as they swore to God that they would do. But these poorly trained officers also fail to follow department rules. And here's the kicker. Here's the one thing that I want you to take home with you. These officers are not being disciplined. They're not even following department guidelines. They're not being disciplined for it. Because you remember I told you, the reason people hate the blue wall the reason why people say there are no good officers is because even when you see an officer behaving poorly or doing something they have no business doing, no one is correcting that behavior. And Superintendent Eddie Johnson is excusing that behavior. He's condoning that behavior. He's actually encouraging that behavior by doing nothing. I want you to catch that. He's excusing, he's condoning, he's encouraging poor behavior. He's encouraging zip-tying a five-year-old. He's encouraging putting a gun to the head of a child. He's okay with them executing warrants on the wrong people and then charging innocent people with crimes that they have not committed. But he's upset with Jesse Smollett. I'm going to say that one more time. He's upset with Jesse Smollett, but he's okay with his officers zip-tying a five-year-old, putting the gun to the head of a child. He's okay with his officers making up crimes for innocent people. These are the behaviors he's okay with. But... He wants Jesse Smollett to pay back $130,000 for investigations. And here's the crazier part about this entire thing. And this is why we understand our system is horribly broken. These warrants are approved by prosecutors and judges. And the police union is in a constant motion of protecting these officers to continue working and to continue terrorizing the people they promised to serve, protect, and defend. Why should we be okay with that? Why should we not hold them responsible for that? Why should we not... Hell, why should we not place the liability on them? This is, that, that's the question for my police apologists. Why should I not place liability on someone that swore to do a job and is not doing it? And then it's in a constant motion of covering it up. It's in a constant motion of trying to say, oh, well, since you don't see it, it doesn't matter. And then, because I'm going to go into some stuff that's probably going to blow your mind. I'm going to go into it. And you have to understand, because of what we're talking about today, it's a sensitive it's a sensitive topic. It's of a sensitive nature. But the reason why I keep bringing up the fact of Eddie Johnson and ex-mayor Raheem Emanuel, which is probably why he's the ex-mayor, because the mayor that's there now, I believe her name is Lori Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot is actually attempting to do something about this foolishness because that's what it is. It is a bunch of bull it is to the point to where you know what honestly I don't even understand why this has continued to be allowed why these officers are still on the force because these are the things that drive a wedge between the police and the and the community because why should we trust them if you're going to let this dude do the wrong thing why should we trust you if you're going to allow him to continue working after he does something wrong. 
And like I said, when I start going into some of these stories, because I believe it's five that I have, it's going to blow your mind at the things that have been tolerated. But yet, the thing that was over the line was Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett was over the line. He needed to apologize to the city of Chicago. He needed to pay the city of Chicago $130,000 because of what he made them do. He made them work, so he should pay them $130,000. Yet, when they're doing the wrong thing, it's okay. When they're doing the wrong thing, no one corrects that behavior. Because I guess, you know, it's their city so they can fuck it up, but nobody else can. Because that's exactly the message that they're sending. Eddie T. Johnson is cool with being okay with crime. Because this is where Scarface actually was right. The police committing more crimes than the criminals. The police are going out as gang members. This is why I was telling a friend of mine when they came up with the conspiracy theory of Chicago police officers actually doing a lot of the murders that are there. It never caught any traction because it didn't surprise anyone. Let that sink in. There was a conspiracy theory about the reason the murder rate in Chicago is so high is because not only are there people out there that are actually killing folks, but they're being aided by police. And the police themselves are committing some of these murders. It never caught traction because it's not shocking. And it's amazing that something that is that egregious is not a shock to anyone's system. Hasn't been a shock to anyone's system for a long time. But we're supposed to believe Eddie Johnson is a good guy. One of his officers... One of his officers literally shot and attempted to kill an unarmed 16-year-old autistic boy that was literally skipping down the street. Then he lied about it. It was caught on videotape with audio. And then he threatened to kill a fellow police officer for not agreeing with his lie that completely contradicted the video that was available. Eddie T. Johnson allowed him to keep working. Eddie T. Johnson attempted to not apologize to the 16-year-old autistic boy's family. But he wanted Jesse Smollett to apologize for a story. He wanted Jesse Smollett to pay back money for him, his people doing an investigation. That's what he wanted. He held a press conference for that. But he didn't hold a press conference for his officer shooting and attempting to murder a 16-year-old autistic boy. That's okay. The same officer attempted to murder his co-worker for not lying for him. According to Johnson, that's okay. But Jesse Smollett is over the line. I want you to keep that in mind. Attempted to murder a 16-year-old autistic boy that was literally skipping down the street. It was caught on video that had audio. He didn't know about it. So when the investigation took place, his police report was completely covered with lies. And then when his co-worker did not back up his lies that contradicted the videotape, he attempted to kill his co-worker and Eddie T. Johnson swept it under the rug. That's okay. You murdering, attempting to murder, well, I guess because he wasn't good at it. That might be the, he, he wasn't good at it, so that might be why he was attempting to cover up because, you know, yeah, give him a couple shots. Hope he gets better at it. That's the encouragement that I speak about because there's no reason to condone, condone that type of behavior. Now, when we talk about the multiple raids on innocent people's homes and arresting innocent people, these people are also going in and terrorizing these children and they're traumatizing them. And 
the first example I'm going to give you is Gilbert Mendez was cuffed in front of his children, Jack and Peter. And after finding out they had raided the wrong apartment, the Chicago police continued to search the apartment. Keep, let's keep that in mind. They didn't turn over the warrants when they first came in the house. That was the department violation. Because why? Terry v. Ohio says when someone is stopped, when your locomotion is stopped, when you're going into a search, they have to give you the warrant first. When they're invading your liberty, they have to give you the warrant first. They're not doing that. They're just busting in people's houses while people are home and searching through their home even after finding out they're not at the right place. They're not verifying addresses. Remember I said that earlier. But they're still searching through these innocent people's home because even though they're in the wrong place, they still might find something. Because they know most people don't fight back. They know most people will, will be okay, don't have time, inconvenienced by it. And, yeah, they don't really want to go against the police because, you know, the police are good people and they'll go out, as people tell me all the time, if you keep talking about this stuff, the police are going to hurt you. But the police are the good guys, right? These people that you are defending and telling me that they're good, they're going to hurt me for talking about the things that they're not doing right, even though it's the things that they swore to God that they would do. But because I'm talking about it, they're going to hurt me, and they're the good guys. When do they stop being the good guys when they're hurting people? Because I didn't know good guys hurt hurt people. Because I, 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 I missed that one where Optimus Prime was out here just ransacking everything, and he was hurting people for no good reason. I thought that was Decepticons, because that's deceptive action. And even when they continued to search on the Mendez home, it wasn't about law. It was about revenue. They were still attempting to charge Gilbert Mendez. They had him cuffed in front of his kids. Had guns pointed at his wife and children. They were cool with it. They were actually walking through the house laughing and joking about it. They even joked about how they knew they had the wrong house. And that how the supervisor signed off on it. And even when it that was brought to the supervisor's attention, he said, okay, cool, you're right. Uh, let's search under this bed. W what are you searching for if you're at the wrong place? You know you're at the wrong house. Why are you still searching? What could you be searching for? You're executing a warrant that's no good. Why, were you, why would you be okay with that when someone brings that to your attention? And now we got Sonya Phillips. She stated that the police used a battering ram to open her door and use a flashbang grenade. And here's the crazier part. They found out early that this woman was not a part of the thing that they were looking for. They weren't at the right house. They knew this. Why? Because her mail was on the front door. The door that they bashed them and her mail was there. They checked her mail. That's also a federal offense too. So, But she's suing, which is, I'm glad for her. I appreciate that. Because she's saying this stupid shit is not okay. She's letting them know she's not condoning these actions. And here's the funnier part. The only thing they found was her 38 Ruger, which she was licensed to carry because she's a parole officer. I'm going to say that one more time. She's a parole officer. They searched her house even after finding out they were at the wrong place. And the only thing they found that was illegal was the fact that it was her registered firearm. Because of her job as a parole officer. They searched their own and attempted to cover it up. And this woman... Sonya Phillips, she's suing. Thank you. Appreciate that, Sonya. Keep going. Because I got another one. Cynthia Easton and her 13-year-old um, grandson had officers throw them to the floor and place rifles to their temples. Now, I'm going to give you, I'm going to set a stage for you. 
You remember way back when I gave you the scenarios for when a warrant can be executed. It has to be done between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Well, these people did not execute that warrant at that time. They executed the warrant closer to 4 a.m. They had this 13-year-old child who was in school outside in 30-degree weather in his bed clothes. They placed him, placed a gun to his temple, and Eddie T. Johnson was cool with that. That was cool. That was all right. Easton also, she was a grandmother. She was forced to be outside in this 30-degree weather in her T-shirt and drawers. And when she asked one of the officers while they were searching, could she get some clothing to cover up because it's 30 fucking degrees outside. She's outside 4 a.m. in her T-shirt and like she's Adina Howard with her T-shirt and her panties on. Can she get some clothes? The officers laughed at her and told her no. Eason is suing them because they were at the wrong address. I'm going to say that one more time. They they thought it was all T. Hen and Chuckles and Eddie T. Johnson excused this behavior. But now they're not turning over information because Eddie T. Johnson is in an active matter of covering this up. He was asked directly by a Fox affiliate about this raid. Eddie T. Johnson didn't have an answer. Eddie T. Johnson decided that he wasn't even going to entertain questions about his officer's fuck-ups. He's not going to do that. That's not what That's not what this is about. Look, I'm trying to do something wrong here. Why you keep calling me out about it? You know, because, again, it's about law, or is it about revenue? Because... It's definitely not about humanity. It's okay for these officers to act in the manner that they are. It's okay for them to be cursing their children. It's okay to put guns to the heads of five-year-olds. It's cool. That's all right. But Jesse Smollett, because he made them do an investigation, that is the ultimate sin. He actually made them work. He made them work, 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 and, you know, do their damn job. And again, they did that knowing they were at the wrong address. And a lot of people, a lot of people are looking for their 1983s when they're going for their lawsuits. And I always tell them, what you have to figure out is the fact that what is the policy that's in place. Is it written? Did they follow those guidelines? And I always tell them, get the police department policies. Get them. Get a copy of them. Because they don't even follow their own guidelines. And here's where the tee comes in at. Ebony Tate is suing the city of Chicago along with the police department and each one of the officers involved in her assault. And I do mean it that way. Because Ebony Tate stated a SWAT team came to her home in the middle of the night with an armored vehicle. And the only reason she had a record of it, because remember, Eddie T. Johnson, the good guy, he didn't want to turn that information over. He said, nope, 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 that's too much. He don't want to turn that information over even though they're doing the right thing according to him. His officers are doing the right thing. Even though he stated that they need more training. They need better training. So which means they're poorly trained. These officers that he's not reprimanding, he's not disciplining. These officers that he's condoning and hiding. These officers are doing the right thing. They're good people. Right? They're doing respectable shit. 
but he can't turn over that information. He can't turn over videotape. And then when he finds out that there's videotape, he doesn't turn over the police reports. So Ebony Tate is suing the city, the police department, and each one of the officers involved in that. And the only reason they had video is, like I said, because the neighbor recorded it and gave it to Ebony. Because the police would not. Eddie T. Johnson was in an active manner of covering it up. But that's okay. Covering up a wrongful raid is okay. But making them do an investigation, that draws the line. Now, that is too much. We cannot have Jesse Smollett out here making us work. Even though they should work on each and every call. They should be working for law on... Now, hold on. I got a question. Because I just named, what, three lawsuits? Here's my question. Eddie T. Johnson wanted Jesse Smollett to pay back $130,000 to the city of Chicago because their police department had to do an investigation for his case. Is Eddie T. Johnson or Raheem Emanuel turning over money that the city has to pay out for all these wrongful rates? Because I just named three lawsuits. They're going to win these lawsuits. And we're talking about not just hundreds of thousands, but we're talking about millions of dollars. Is Eddie T. Johnson and Raheem Emanuel going to pay back that money? Because you remember I talked about the multiple police incidents where they didn't offer apologies. I even named one where they didn't offer an apology. Because even with these people, they didn't offer an apology, but they wanted one from Jesse Smollett. They wanted the payment from Jesse Smollett. Are they making payments to the city of Chicago for the officer's actions? The people that they supervise and manage, the people that they are aiding and cover up, are they offering payments? That's the that's question I got. Because even with Ebony, and in, even in this incident, they held a child at gunpoint. It is mind-blowing to me that these officers are going out. Their actions are being excused of not only holding a gun on a child, but they're doing it in almost every instant. And again, another one of those situations. Ebony Tate was denied clothing while she stood outside in her socks and drawers in 30 degree Chicago weather. And I have to emphasize Chicago weather because if you haven't been to Chicago, it's cold in July, okay? It is called the Windy City for a reason. So if you're outside in socks and drawers, it's cold. Now, because Chicago's 30 is not like everybody else's 30. Just like El Paso's 45 is like everybody else's 60. Our 45 is like 60. Georgia's 45 is like 40. Like, it's cold as shit. But you got to understand, Chicago's 30 is cold. I just want you to understand. If you, I'm going I'm, I'm to get back on subject. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to get in the pool. Right, just get in the pool, get completely soaking wet head to toe. Then I want you to go to your local uh, restaurant with a walk-in freezer and go stand in there for two minutes. That's a Chicago 30. Just want you, I don't care what the, what the freezer said that. Just walk into it and stand there for two minutes. That is a Chicago 30. Because this woman's standing outside. They're at the wrong address. They're executing a warrant on the wrong home. They actually even attempted to arrest this woman. And they were looking for a man. Because, oh, they got, she's got to be hiding them. She got to be, even though that's not the right address, that's not the right address on the warrant. She hiding them. She know him. But they're the good guys. This behavior is condoned. It's accepted. It's encouraged. It's also hidden. Because this is also another one where Eddie T. Johnson has made sure 
that the records are not turned over. But they're the good guys. Dominique Wilson, also a victim. <clears throat> her and her children were zip-tied. Five years old, seven years old, and eight years old. And had them stand in the cold and the rain. So, I want you to understand this. Dominique Wilson, outside, three small infant children, five, seven, and eight, zip-tied, outside, early morning, Chicago, cold and rain. The police thought this was okay and funny. And here's the, here's the, here's the kicker. Dominique is suing the police department. Because, see, if you haven't noticed, there's a pattern. And I'm going to thank Fox for this one. Because all of these people came forward about these raids. All these people came forward to Fox when they found out Fox was doing an independent investigation of these raids. And I actually, I commend them because you don't often see that. You don't often see a police department being investigated by an actual news station. This news station is actually going out, doing something to help the people. I got to commend them for it. I appreciate it. And these people are coming forward. And I am pretty sure somebody is putting these people in contact with attorneys that sue the city. That successfully sue the city. Because the people... the uh, the attorneys that are working on this, these cases, they have a track record of winning. And you can't get mad at that. It is a beautiful thing. And the CPD has gone as far as stating they do have 16 hours of video from the Wilson raid. But it's too much to review and they don't have time to release it. So look, look, I, I, I want you to catch that. They have... they have acknowledged they have 16 hours of body cam footage from the Wilson raid. They got 16 hours. But it's too much for them to review to see if any officer created or did something wrong or, or you know, committed any infraction or even though they did search the wrong house. They did zip tie children, which is against department policy. They also held gun to these children's head. You, you know, you see the pattern? Because, again, they got away with it once. They're getting away with it a second time. They're going to keep getting away with it. Why? Because Eddie T. Johnson thinks this is okay. This is okay behavior. This is not behavior that he wants to correct. This is the behavior that he's okay with. He's condoning. He's encouraging. He's also defending and hiding. But Jesse Smollett, 16 hours of video from Wilson was too much to review, and they couldn't release it. Eddie T. Johnson had no problem releasing more than 70 hours when it came to Jesse Smollett. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. 16 hours is too much to review. 16 hours is too much to release. However, 70 hours is okay. I'm going to say that one more time. 7 zero, 70 hours is okay. Because that's what they released for Jesse Smollett. 70 hours of video. But they won't release 16 hours because that's too much. See, that's why I, I, I look at my, my nieces and nephews. I look at my kids' homework, and I, I, I don't understand a lot of it. And I call it that new math. Because this is something that I'm pretty sure Eddie T. Johnson and his cohorts actually take part in. Because back in the day where I went to school, 16 was smaller than 70. And looking at the new math, I'm thinking 
16, 32, 48, what was that, 64? Yeah, that's still smaller than 70. I can send out 16 at least four times, and it's smaller than 70. But with that new man, that might be what he's using, because I don't understand that. Which is why I always tell my children, you better go to Google. So I'm going to go to Google on this one. Because as long as I've known it, 16 is smaller than 70. Because he wanted Jesse Smollett to pay for 70. Is he paying for the 16? He wanted Jesse Smollett to pay for 70. But it's Eddie T. Johnson and Raheem Emanuel paying for 16 because that's too much 16 is too much 70 that's just that's the right amount and eddie t johnson refused to answer questions regarding the matter say that he was making an attempt to train these officers and they are trying their best had to pause for dramatic effect because i want you to understand something he stated, Eddie T. Johnson stated, they are making an attempt to train officers and they are trying their best. Their best is costing the city millions. Their best is raiding folks' homes that are innocent, that are not committing a crime. Their best is pointing guns at children. Their best is searching homes they don't have permission to. Their best is violating the rights of the citizens they chose to swear to protect. That's their best. Again, I had to pause for dramatic effect because that's, if that's their best, I really would hate their worst. Because what Eddie T. Johnson is asking from us is a participation trophy. They're showing up, so we should be okay with that. They, 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 they actually swore to do the job, even though they're not doing it right. They're not doing it right by any stretch of their imagination because they're not following law, and they're not following department policy. But they're showing up. So we should be okay with whatever the hell they do once they get there. Because they, they want a participation trophy. I'm going to give you a quick story. I coached football. And I coached basketball. And pretty much they went from the same season. <clears throat> from football to basketball. And we got an opportunity to get trophies prior to the playoffs. When I was handed these participation trophies, the first thing I did was walk towards the trash can. And the director told me, hey, you can't do that because these parents paid for that. So, okay, cool. Me and my other coaches, we put together a meeting with the parents and the children. And I asked them, now, I want you to, I'm going I'm to add in something else, because I'm not sure if you watched the Cosbys. Because back in the day, I used to love Bill Cosby, because at, at the point of the Cosbys, he had lessons in these shows. And one of the shows, he was speaking to Elvin, because Elvin and Denise had hit them with a surprise engagement or that they were dating. I can't remember exactly what it was. But Elvin was like, well, why don't you like me? The greatest analogy came to mind. So, Dr. Huxtable says, okay, you like steak? He said, yes, sir. He said, all right, you, what kind of steak you like? He said, T-bone. He said, all right, so I get a T-bone. I get it medium rare for you. so Or medium well for you. Okay, I got it dressed up. You got to have the onions on. Oh, yeah, got to have a little bit of vinegar in there to soften it. Oh, yeah, got to have it grilled, smoky. You smell it? Yep. 
got to have potato on the side. Get your little greens or asparagus. They say, all right. We say, yeah, I put all that together, and then I serve it to you on a trash can lid. Is it still appealing? Had to pause for dramatic effect because I want you to understand. That is how I dress those trophies up. I made those trophies the most raggedy piece of crap that they were because trophies are for those that win. Trophies are for those that earn them. Just showing up is what you're supposed to do. When did we become a society of giving benefit of the doubt for those that do what they're supposed to do? That's like, oh, I took care of my kids. You're supposed to take care of your fucking kids. So now we got to give you a, a trophy for doing what you're supposed to do. I show up to work every day. I, so we got to give you an award for that. Just because you're doing what you're supposed to do. We got awards for it. And Eddie T. Johnson wants an award just for his officers being there, not for them doing the right thing. But if we go to a fast food place where we have minimum wage workers, we have these young kids that's in there, half of them not even paying attention to what's going on. If our fries are not hot, we go off the handle. But we pay somebody over $100,000 a year, and we have to excuse their behavior because they're trying. We're supposed to hold this eight, nine, ten dollar an hour person at a higher standard than we do a person that we're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to per year. And yeah, fuck you. I'm not giving you a participation trophy. And each and every one of these people that have been wronged by you, I encourage them to sue the Chicago Police Department or any police department or any police officer that fails to do the duty they swore to do. What about their families? They're not thinking about these families when they're holding guns to children's heads. Because whether we like it or not, whether we understand it or not, when the police officer pulls their gun, that is an aggravated assault. There isn't any dressing it up. So are you okay with aggravated assault on a five-year-old? Are you okay with the aggravated assault on a six-year-old? Are you okay with aggravated assault on a seven-year-old? How old do they have to be before the aggravated assault is not okay? How old? Because Tate had a five-month-old and had a gun drawn on her while she's holding the baby. I'm going to say that one more time. She had a five-month-old. She had an automatic weapon aimed at her and this child. And she was screaming, I have a baby. I have a baby. And the police officer is telling her to put her five-month-old child down while holding the automatic weapon at her. When is it not okay? When are we going to stop making excuses for this stupidness? When is it going to be, you know what, you're right. They're not thinking about those families. Why should we be concerned with theirs? Because... They're doing the right thing. Why are they hiding it if they're the good guys? Why would you not want everybody to see? You want a participation trophy for just showing up, but you don't want anybody to see what you're showing up to do. Explain that to me. Because I can't condone that. Because you would have an issue if I walked up to somebody and just smacked the absolute dog shit out of them. Be like, oh, this this huge black guy just smacked her for no reason. But you're okay with a gun being pointed in the face of a five-year-old. How does that work? Please explain that to me. Because even it's gone as far as Eddie T. Johnson and the police union and the police, what is that, the COPA? The Police Officers Protection Agency, I'm not sure exactly what it stands for, but they've actually denied Freedom of, freedom of Information Act request. Because I'm sure you've seen my video of what to do when they do that. Because that's exactly what people are doing. Regarding the execution of these bad warrants and the execution of these bad raids to the public and those affected by the, the terroristic events. 
Now, random people, when you're when they're doing the arrest, I'm not sure if, if this is going on in your area, but generally, um, I've seen it in Georgia, I've seen it in South Carolina, I've seen it in um, Tennessee, I've seen it in um, Arkansas, I've seen it in Alabama, where someone that's arrested, warrants that are um, either open or being executed are placed into what they call the dollar paper or they're putting them online. Yeah, Chicago has taken all that down. They're denying public access to events such as that. They're denying the people that were affected by these incidents access to them. Because I know everybody hears me say, get the police report. Get the warrant application. Get the warrant. Get the um, all audio and video. Because even last week when we spoke about Aaron Dean and him killing Miss Jefferson, the first thing the police department did at Fort Worth was say, hey, we want to be transparent, so we're going to release the body cam footage. But yet they edited the body cam footage. I'm going to say that one more time. Because even Fox in Fort Worth, they stated it was heavily edited. Audio is missing. Parts of the video are missing. But we're supposed to believe they're the good guys. They're being transparent, but they're not showing you what they are saying they're showing you. They're pulling the Houdini and we're supposed to be okay with it. Literally. Literally, they're pulling a Houdini and they're saying, be impressed with what we gave you. But they're the good guys. Chicago is completely denying anything. And remember, 16 hours is too much to review for wrongdoing. It's 16 hours is too much to release. But they released 70 hours of Jesse Smollett. What he did was over the line, but holding a gun and zip tying a five-year-old, that's okay. We're not even going to review that. That that's Even though it violated department policy, we ain't even going to review that. We know it's, it doesn't do what they're supposed to do. We know they're not doing it. We know that they're affecting innocent people. They know they're creating a rift between the public and police. But yeah, that's okay. That's all right. We still want them to talk to us, but we're going to lie about every instance and interaction that we have with them. But it, yeah, it's okay. That's all right. Because it's the police, it's the people's fault, not the police. You know, they shouldn't be out here worrying and things like that because what we're doing is okay. Yeah, that's stupid stuff that they're doing. Yeah, mm -mm. But what we're doing is okay. And it's gotten to the point where the Illinois Attorney General has to be involved with this mess. And CPD is going to the point of blocking actual public records. Because, like I said, the people that were involved in this, they're stopping them from getting it. These are going to federal judges where they're being ordered to turn this over, and they're still fighting it. They're still appealing it. They're still dragging their feet on it. But they're the good guys. Jesse Smollett was out of line. But covering up police crimes, because the police commit more crimes than the criminals, we're supposed to be okay with that. They're not protecting the public as they swore that they would do. But Eddie T. Johnson says that's cool. He's all right with that. And you hear me talk about this word, or we say this word more often than not. And that word is negligence. Because when you're talking about multiple execution of wrong warrants, execution of wrong raids, these actions are irresponsible. They are reckless. And it's what I completely describe as negligence. Because even Eddie T. Johnson said they are not following department policy that is willful negligence because you remember i told you qualified immunity is lost through ignorance or willful acts 
when you have someone such as the supervisor, like in the Mendez case, Joseph Capello, he was the officer that got the warrant approved. He was the one, the young man stated, hey, you signed off on this. When you have the notion and the, you understand that what you have done is wrong, Joseph Capello actually committed an act of a Fourth Amendment violation by continuing to search, knowing he had the wrong place, knowing that he shouldn't be there searching. Knowing he had violated department policy, he lost his immunity. Because you remember, ignorance and willful acts. He willingly continued to search after the deputy even said, hey, you signed off on it. He laughed and said, yeah, let's search under this bed. He knows it's not the right place. He knows Mendez isn't the right person. But he still continues to search Mendez's house. He lost his immunity by continuing to um, search that house. Now, here's the crazier part. Every deputy that was involved in it continued to comply with the actions of Joseph Capello. They continued to comply with it. They also lost immunity. Willful acts and ignorance. This is why I say, get it, follow through, because if you don't start fighting, they will continue this foolishness. That's how you stop it. This is where the 1983s will go into effect because they are violating department policy. It is written. Because in this, in, this, in this instance, if the police are doing a raid or executing a warrant, they must turn the warrant over immediately. They are not doing that. This is a violation of Terry v. Ohio because, again, whether it's a house, car, RV, hotel room, rental, they must articulate the reason they are invading your privacy and why they are encroaching on your civil liberties. This is why I have this set out. Because at the end of the day, no matter what it is, you stand on the law. If they choose not to enforce it, cool. They're making a choice to not participate in it. They ain't got to participate. Go ahead and take the money that they've, quote unquote, been stealing. Because that's what it equates to. You're law enforcement. If you're not enforcing law, what are you doing? You're not making the fries. The fries ain't hot. So if somebody can't stay at McDonald's for not making sure fries are hot, you damn sure can't keep that badge if you can't enforce law. I'm going to say that one more time. If someone cannot stay at McDonald's because the fries aren't hot, you damn sure can't keep that badge because you can't read and execute a warrant property. You can't enforce law. And here's the crazy part. This is where the warrant application takes place. Because you have somebody like Joseph Capello who used a confidential informant to get the information on, from the Mendez. He used the confidential informant. Who Now keep in mind. When you're using the confidential informant. One it has to be noted. And then two. The Freedom of Information Act has to be named. They have to be named. And then three. They, you have to have gotten information. That resulted in an arrest. Prior. This is why that warrant application. Is so important. Because. Again, it's not often what's in it. It's what's not in that application. Because even in the warrant itself, it has to describe the particular person and particular place in a house to be searched. 
They can't just randomly tear through your house. It has to be described in, I hate to say this, specificity. You have to be specific when they're describing it. And 90% of the time, and I'm pretty sure if you have a warrant executed in Chicago, challenge it. Because we see they're not doing anything with a warrant correctly. Challenge it. Because it's better for 10 guilty to go free than one innocent man suffer. And I've given you five. I've given you five that have suffered. And unfortunately, to weed out the crap that the Chicago Police Department is doing and the crap that Eddie T. Johnson and Raheem Emanuel were allowing and still allowing, condoning, encouraging, and covering up is not okay. This is what has to be done. Unfortunately, there will be some guilty that actually um, benefit from this. But... If one innocent is suffering, the system itself needs to be redone. It needs to be broken entirely apart and redone. Because just like when you're looking at real estate, you have these older homes. You have a lot of things that are quote-unquote grandfathered in. But once you change one thing, you have to change all things. One of my favorite um, shows was Flip This House. Oftentimes you will see homes in such raggedy decay that the first thing they did was tear it down beyond the studs. And once they tore it down, it was really no reason to keep the rest of it. Because they had to build it from scratch. That's what we're looking at with the Chicago Police Department. We got to tear it completely down and rebuild it from scratch because the people there that's working there don't deserve to be wearing a badge. And I do mean the people there. Eddie T. Johnson does not deserve to be superintendent of Chicago. Raheem Emanuel, he's no longer mayor. He didn't deserve to be mayor because he condoned those actions. It needs to be completely redone in there. <laughs> because even like when I spoke about Joseph Capello, he went and got the warrant from the confidential informant. The thing is, he swore to that warrant. He swore under oath that everything in that warrant is true. Whenever you find that out, if it's missing the specific places to be searched, and you see them searching other places. Guess what? Now it's thrown out. When you see that Joseph Capello was okay with continuing to search, that's admission because you can't argue against yourself. Get his police report. See if his police report adds up to his body camera. And these families have been complaining about the police department for not responding when it came to replace the items that were lost or destroyed or even broken during these failed warrants and raids, such as storage closet doors and children's toys and even the phones of those that adults that work. And again, Eddie T. Johnson wanted an apology from Jesse Smollett. He wanted Jesse Smollett to pay back the city $130,000. Eddie T. Johnson has yet to apologize to any of the victims that have been shot and killed or shot by his police officers during his tenure. He's yet to issue one apology. And is he paying the city back for all the lawsuits his officers are causing. Because again, that's what he said. He was for the people of Chicago. So if his officers are terrorizing the people of Chicago, he's not disciplining the people of Chicago. Why would you ask Jesse Smollett to do anything when you won't do it at all? And then you're covering up and you're aiding these officers in being bad. You're aiding these officers in an active cover 
and it's a federal conspiracy. This is where someone will be charged with racketeering because they are profiting from this. Because there are they're executing warrants that shouldn't be executed in place they shouldn't be executed and they're not using qualified information to use it to get these warrants. And whenever they realize it's wrong, they look for a reason to arrest, they look for a reason to cover it up. But they're the good guys. Now, when Eddie T. Johnson decides that he's going to issue an apology or if he's going to make payments for all the wrong his officers have done, then he should hold another press conference. But until then, yeah, he shouldn't even be running his mouth about anything for any reason. Because when you're doing something as a leader that you yourself will not, have not, and cannot do. You're just running your mouth. And nobody cares to hear you. And in closing today, I want to thank everybody that has been donating. I want to issue a big shout out to Robert. And I want you to think about something. If you are set forth in a system that you don't like, your God-given right, your constitutional ability has been given to you to stand up and fight back for it. Why aren't you fighting back? I'm going to show you how great I am. The chicken colossus.